I won't have very much time after posting this and I don't care. Even if they do decide to suicide me, death would actually be better than being bounced around from prison to prison as an off-the-books prisoner. Or worse, be housed in one of those off-record, offshore facilities where I'm sure to die of old age. I'm not one for overly dramatic exposition, so let's get on with it. I've worked with the company for the past 30 years, since the end of Desert Storm where I was admitted as an intern out of MIT. I worked under a company subcontracted by the NSA during the second year of my undergraduate degree and continued with them after the internship as a freelance technician, up until I achieved my master's and later my PhD in programming. In short, they've basically been with me every step of my adult life and education. I feel uncomfortable describing myself as being gifted. I like to describe myself as having a certain affinity for mathematics, reasoning and problem solving which earned me a top position as a computer analyst for the CIA at the age of 35. Despite being relatively young, I understood how serious and important my job was. I had three identification badges, the codes for which changed twice daily on the entrance and exit of the facility I worked at in the Northeast. I was also required to sign several memorandums of understanding, privacy contracts, and other documents which would make me an automatic enemy of the state if I so much as violated any of them. My personal computer and laptop at home were also subject to random examination without warrant. In essence, short of the routine colonoscopy, the CIA kept a close tab on almost every aspect of my life, from tracing the cell phone calls of suspected terror cells on American soil, to which was the latest porn video I watched. At last I digress. I had done my job very well for almost three decades and was rewarded handsomely for it. The work wasn't necessarily difficult, but it did demand a lot of my time and attention as I was basically on call 24 hours a day. Before I attached to the CIA Department of Domestic Threats, which means that I along with others were responsible for monitoring the ICT trails of individuals and groups being monitored by the government for various reasons. In essence, it involves taking a peek into the social media accounts of the hundreds of millions of people that are logged on at any given time. Yes, the conspiracies do have some truth to them. Take notice before you two are zuxed. The strange stuff happened almost a year ago. I was assigned to look into the digital trail of a group of individuals who we suspected belonged to an anonymous-esque whistleblower group intent on revealing top-secret government information. In the past, we have had threats from whistleblower organizations to release information or intelligence, but none came as close as this particular threat. The group which we tracked down to a brownstone apartment in Manhattan had successfully made it past the various levels of security and were on the verge of accessing the database when we were able to shut it down. Three of the five members were detained to my knowing. What happened to them after that, I never found out. After all, I'm just the computer guy. One of the curious things about this particular incident was where the group wanted to access the information. It wasn't at the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, which is often the target of repeated hacking attempts. Instead, the IP address for the target seemed to be traced to an off-the-books facility somewhere in the southwest. I didn't have the time or luxury to think about it at the time, but after a few weeks when I had a very rare moment, with no assignments to supervise or paperwork to file, I decided to do some digging of my own to find out more about it. I wasn't particularly interested. Maybe the group were looking for something in particular, but it was strange they would take such a risk to go after something that could have been more easily accessed at the company's Virginia office. What piqued my interest even more was the existence of this off-the-books facility. I watched the movies about secret government buildings and even heard rumors from some of my co-workers about such places but I always dismissed it as gossip. I did the necessary concealments to avoid being traced by the office security measures. Despite being stringent and almost all-seeing, it had flaws just like any other security system. Small flaws, but if you knew where and when to look, you could turn the book wide open on files, records, field reports, anything you could dream of. Before long, I saw the facility was located in Elgin, Texas quite literally in the middle of nowhere and no clearly discernible roads or highways near it, at least based on the satellite photos I saw. Satellites, wow. I only had a window of five minutes, but based on what I gathered, it appeared to be only one building, just about the regular dimensions of your typical office building. 
Hell, if I didn't know any better, I would thought the CIA servers made a mistake and were showing me the top of a poultry feed manufacturer or a tractor repair shop. But no, this was the real deal. Not as exciting as Area 51, but what I saw implied that it was one of several links in the information vessels of the CIA. An internal circuit designed to withstand digital attacks from enemies, with Langley being a red herring. I quickly closed the tabs and windows that got me to that area of the CIA database and restarted my computer. I did it just in time because no more than two minutes later, two of the floor supervisors, let's call them Mr. Black and Mr. White, were seen prowling about the cubicles on my end of the floor for no good reason. I don't consider myself a very paranoid person. Despite being exposed to the clandestine, cloak and dagger things the CIA does, on an almost hourly basis, I also don't consider myself to be a conspiracy theorist, but I knew they were down here looking to get an idea of who accessed that part of our department's files. Going from cubicle to cubicle looking over the shoulders of the staff to see what was on their screens, I knew they were looking for me, but I was just fast enough. I also knew that just because I wasn't found this time meant that I had the green light to be careless. Over the next few months I began using an internet cafe, one city over to access information. Despite my loyalty to the agency, and the fear of what would happen to me if caught, human curiosity won out and got the better of me. Using some technology I, um, bartered from an old friend from MIT, I was able to access data from the Texas facility for 30 minutes once a week. I was able to see a lot of information. Everything from the US black bag operations in various parts of the globe to secrets on global leaders as well as local politicians who are being monitored for treason and even blackmailed for child pornography. I learned the CIA had a surprisingly close affiliation not only with other international intelligence agencies, but also with several organizations. Well, agencies you just wouldn't normally expect. Mainly the Vatican. There was a lot of files and information being shared in relation to certain priests who were working with the CIA and regime destabilization efforts in certain regions, mainly Eastern Europe, the Middle East, East Africa, and Latin America. But the sharing of information didn't end there. The CIA was also very much interested in recording and transcribing the works of certain priests who served as exorcists and their findings in certain cases of supposed possession. Was the CIA interested in fighting monsters? I don't know. Based on the large compilation of data I saw, it definitely seemed like they were interested in something. Along with the role of various social media operators in assisting the agency with data and information, I also learned about the deaths and assassinations of certain high-profile people. Oh, by the way, Jerry Epstein is in fact dead. His death was planned by the CIA well over a year ago. So despite the memes, he really is gone. Over the next few months, my prowling on the Texas facility gradually got less and less. I considered myself an expert on the actual goings on the global geopolitical scene and would only watch the news to get a hearty good laugh on how poorly informed the anchors and experts were on panel discussions. That was up until a few weeks ago when I saw something that piqued my interest yet again. On the web layout of the Texas facility, I saw an icon I hadn't noticed before at the very bottom of the screen. It was in light brown, almost beige text that matched with the background. If you weren't scanning every inch of the screen you would have missed it. The text of the icon read, Terra View. I right clicked on it, turned on my invisible cloak and went off. The icon bounced me off of several servers throughout the world as expected, and had several pop-ups describing the consequences of unauthorized viewing. I had no idea what it was. At first I thought it would have been a tracking monitor of various secret installations like the Texas facility, but I was wrong. Dead wrong. At first it seemed like a normal Google Earth search, nothing special or outstanding about it. I was able to see the roof of the Texas facility again, along with various other places. Nothing particularly spooky or weird jumped out at me. That was before I began noticing the numbers and data that appeared at the sides and corners of the screen. If you are not familiar with how Google Earth works, in essence you get rudimentary information on the location, coordinates, distances, and areas along with other data on various regions you're looking at. It was in essence the same with this particular software, but the numbers seemed wrong. It placed the area of certain places much smaller than they ought to have been. 
I looked at various areas like Pasadena, Florida, and Mississippi. All of them had grossly incorrect data. How is it possible that all of these places were so incorrectly labeled and calculated? Was it a problem with the algorithm? Or was it just an elaborate prank at my expense? I wasn't convinced of either of these so I decided to zoom out of the US and do some calculations of my own. When I caught something at the corner of the screen that looked strange, there appeared to be ice caps to the west where there shouldn't be, and that's when things got weird. I tried rotating the image on the screen using the cursor, and it didn't turn. This wasn't a map, this was the globe, but that was impossible. I tried scrolling back and forward to make sense of what I was seeing, but nothing seemed to make any sense. I was confused and a little nervous at this point. By now 20 minutes had already passed and I had 10 more left before the cloaking signal would begin to get unreliable. I zoomed back out again thinking it was an algorithm, as I was once again bounced around as the screen buffered. What came back on did not relieve me. It shook me. What I saw was the place we've been living our entire lives. I saw the Earth, the real Earth. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of globe-like spheres attached by what I could only describe as tethers to a massive central sphere. As far as the eye could see, I saw no stars, no sun, no moon, or any celestial objects. I felt my eyes water and my mouth open. Get a fucking room, pal. The man next to me said disgustingly as he got up from his cubicle in the internet cafe. In hindsight, he probably saw my expression and thought I was looking at porn. I couldn't begin to form rational thoughts in my mind, much less words to respond to him. What was I seeing? Is this real? Was this really where we lived? Our Earth or sphere was located somewhere to the northeast of the mother globe. Well, what I call it. What were these other spheres? What lived there? How could this have been kept a secret? I began to think of the ramifications of such a conspiracy and reason quite simply that in order for it to be held over the course of centuries, quite literally everybody would have had to have been in on it. My stomach turned as I thought of our minute ness in this ocean of life. The earth was indeed spherical, but in what way? It was gargantuan and we and everything we knew and would ever know occupied less than one sixteenth of the total area. I was about to close off the window and the device when it happened. The view of the globe shifted from our sphere and rapidly zoomed into another, not too distant globe. I tried to zoom back out but I couldn't. The signal was being accessed from another point and my commands weren't being responded to. At first I thought I had been made and the CIA was trying to locate me. So I hurriedly turned off the device. Just before the screen cut to windows blue, I saw them. The things looked like nothing I could describe, and that's when I knew I was accessing a camera feed from another one. Another globe. When I was in college I made up credits by doing an elective on plant biology. In one of my textbooks I saw bright yellow fungus. I think they're called lichen, that's the closest I can describe them as. Sentient fungus that moved and shook and vibrated the way no living thing should look like. They emitted colors I can now only see in my dreams and the after image of these colors has a shadow of something that makes me shake, and my eyes water just to think of it. I got up from that cubicle and ran just before the device shut off. I ran back to my apartment, packed my things and left. I'm in the south now, with nothing but the clothes I have in a knapsack and a list of regrets. They'll be coming for me soon. I'll be labeled as homeless, or deranged struggling with depression, or they'll make me disappear. Either way I know too much and regret knowing too much. All the mathematics and logic in the world can't help me now. I was such a fool to think we could handle what was out there. In my final hours I can only think and reflect on the human mind. How beautifully simple. How I miss being ignorant. Thank you to my superfans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.